call the board meeting to order. Santa be led in the pledge of Mr. Woodall. is the result of all the time and effort that he invested to prepare, prepare for this regional competition. I thank everybody who is here tonight accompanying Jackson and would like to invite Mr. George Teasdale, the Director of Social Studies, to come to the podium and help us recognize Jackson and tell us a little about, about his performance in the History B. We will then present a certificate of recognition and have a group picture taken. Thank you. The National History Bee was founded in 2010 by an Ivy League student aspiring to be a history teacher, and he happened to be a 19-day Jeopardy! champion. He decided to promote history education in the U.S. with some of his winnings. The competition at the middle school level has four rounds, an intramural bee on paper, an online regional qualifying exam, which is internet-based, a regional B, which is buzzer-based, not like a certain game show, and a national championship, which will be conducted in Washington, D.C. this May. Jackson Galati of South Middle School competed in three of those rounds. He represented the Newburgh School District and South Middle School at the regional B in Bethlehem, New York. The New York region he represented is all of New York State, except for the five boroughs, Nassau and Suffolk counties. Jackson was the only sixth grader competing that day at the middle school level, and he finished in seventh place. Congratulations to Jackson, to Janelle Santo, teacher at South Middle School and the South National History Bee Coordinator, and Mrs. Alice Kish, Jackson's social studies teacher, and of course to the Galati family. We ask that Jackson come forward and receive his certificate. We have the New York State School Boards Association School Board View Recognition Program. Madam President, tonight is a very special occasion for the board and for the district for three of our board members are being recognized by the New York State School Boards Association. And they are Dawn Fuchek, Leadership Development Training, Level 1 Award, Runston T. Lewis, Leadership Development Training Level 1 and 2 Awards, and Nathan Vesley, Leadership Development Training Level 1 and 2 Awards. I'd ask them to please come up.
Next, we have a report from Arnold Damon and McCourty, our district architects. Good evening, and thank you. Um, I'll give you a brief update with regard to the status of the capital project. Um, I'm going to walk through the projects currently either underway, uh, wrapping up, or those that are being planned. Um, we have three architects, as you know, working for the district, so I'll walk through these projects in accordance with the projects that each of the architects are working on. Um, Minuta Architecture is currently working on the Gardner Town Masonry Project, that, or the GAMS Masonry Project that was completed um, this past summer. There are some minor punch list items that remain there. Uh, there was also a project done at Valesgate, which is also substantially complete with uh, punch list work that's being done there. And there's uh, some additional site work that is currently being evaluated um, at the back side of the building. Uh, with regard to upcoming work, Gardner Town was originally bid last year and that project is scheduled for construction this summer. So the pre-construction meetings and submittal process are underway and that work will start this summer and is intended to be completed this summer. Um, at Foster Town, we have a project that is currently in design. We have plans in for review by the district. We'll be going through those at our Thursday meeting with the superintendent and the board president, and then those will be headed to SED for, your, for approval. We also have the Temple Hill main entrance stair uh, drawings that we have received for final review, and the SED forms are ready for, for that project to be signed, so that can be sent up. Um, both of those projects um, would be addendums, and we hope to get those turned around and ready to go out to bid so we can do the work this summer. Um, with regard to the CS Arch projects at Newburgh Free Academy and Horizons on the Hudson, we have some uh, work to finish up over the April break and into the summer. We also have some additional masonry work that's going to be done in the pool <coughs> courtyard. You may recall that at last month's meeting you approved uh, resolutions for the architects to proceed with that design work. You will be receiving in your next update from the superintendent a copy of that schedule. Our goal there is to complete those plans within the next few weeks. Again, get that project up to SED and look to get that bid so we can try to get that work done this summer. Uh, the work at uh, HOH, you may recall there was some exterior concrete repair work that was done. That's a little bit more extensive. Um, that will have to be submitted to SED as well. We're not sure if we're going to be able to get that ready for this summer or not, but we'll provide an update on that within the next couple of weeks. The uh, Samuel Architecture projects include South Middle School and Gidney Avenue, as well as some work that was done at Heritage. Um, with regard to South Middle School, there are some additional items underway with some program change work that was being done, primary, primarily electrical work at this time. Uh, we also have exterior door replacement that's going to start over the um, April break. And then this summer we have actual exterior door frames that will be removed and then new doors installed in some of those locations as well. Um, Gidney Avenue, we are well underway with the work in that building and the conversion of that building to a K-8. We had a meeting with the building administrators earlier in the month to walk through the phasing plan for the work that will be um, starting over April break. As you know, we've been working through that building throughout the school year where we do our annual abatement work in the summer or during the holiday breaks and then the next group of classrooms are started in terms of renovation. Uh, we are continuing our evaluation there with regard to the work that will be done in the administrative area and we're also evaluating what we refer to as the B wing or the old sixth grade wing to confirm that the scope of the improvements there fits within the funding that we have available for that project. Our goal at um, GAMS remains the same. The goal is to complete all the work by the end of this year and have that project finished up. I think that's a, kind of a quick overview of the projects that are currently underway. Any questions? Madam President, that ends this part of the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Pico. I'd just like to take this opportunity to uh, review some of our public comment protocol. The Board of Education recognizes the value of public comment on educational issues and matters of public interest. 
In order to permit the fair and orderly expression of public comment, the following rules shall govern and be administered by the presiding officer. Please note that the first public comment period is limited to comments on items on tonight's agenda. Later this evening, we will hear comments on non-agenda items. We do have copies of our policies and procedures that are currently in place on the table <coughs> in the corner of the auditorium. We will adhere to the current meeting's policies number 0160 and our current public comment procedures. Prior to making your comments, please state your name and address for the record. Identify any group or organization you may be here representing this evening. Comments are limited to five minutes or less per speaker so that everyone who wants to speak has an opportunity to do so. Beginning this evening, we will have a timekeeper for this purpose. If you are unable to finish your remarks during the five minute time frame, you can supplement them by submitting a written statement to the district clerk. All comments are to be directed to the Board of Education and all comments will be recorded by the board, by the board clerk. Neither the board nor the administration will engage in dialogue or respond to questions concerning individual students or personnel matters. This is not an attempt to stifle public comment. Rather, it is done to protect the privacy <coughs> rights of the individuals involved. We encourage anyone who wishes to discuss a particular student or employee to contact the appropriate district staff member. If you are unclear as to whom you should contact, please see the board clerk at the end of this meeting. Handouts and or petitions are to be given only to the district clerk for distribution to the board. The board will receive and consider all written comments. Civility and mutual respect is expected. <coughs> Note here also that you may also write to the Board of Education in care of the district clerk. Um, her email address is here as well as on the district website and uh, or you can use the district's address here New Bergen Large City School District 124 Grand Street New Bergen New York at this time we will have public discussion and comment on agenda items we will first hear from two individuals who have submitted um, with our public comment procedure form First, we will hear from Lewis Asher. This will be on agenda items. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Lewis Asher. I'm a stakeholder uh, in our education system, along with pretty much everybody else here. Um, in addition to being a taxpayer, I also have uh, three children in the district. Um, I'm here uh, representing approximately uh, 40 parents uh, whose daughters um, participate in girls track and what we are asking is we urge you to reconsider the appointment of the assistant girls track coach. Coach Green has built up an exemplary team. We do not agree that it is in the best interest of our athletes to force him to work with an inexperienced assistant coach not of his choosing. This is not a position that should be on the job training for an assistant coach. Uh, we are concerned about continuity with the team and also with the potential of injury uh, with a group of uh, students this large. We ask that you reopen the posting for coaches with track and field experience or for the current indoor assistant uh, to be able to apply. The position was previously held by two assistant coaches but was cut down to one. We do need someone with experience and knowledge to coach girls track. We appreciate all due consideration as this matter must be addressed prior to the start of the spring season. I will mention on a side note that at an organizational meeting uh, for, for girls uh, track, um, there was at least 50 to 55 girls that were looking to try out for this team. The program is, is a great program and Coach Green has done a great job building a team. Uh, we ask uh, that you, as I said, reconsider 
uh, this matter and see that it gets taken care of, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anshu. Next, we'll hear from Kayla Phipps. should be taken, well, I'm sorry for my bad grammar, but, but he should be considered because of um, past practices. He's been on the team, he's been helping me out, he's understand all our injuries. If you take somebody who doesn't have experience, it's gonna be difficult. And Coach Green is not only gonna have to coach 50 other girls, but he's gonna have to assist and try to coach another coach. And it's not really fair to him. Not to, he's not able to choose who he wants. Just picking somebody who's not experienced at all. She has been asked if she's been experienced and she knows nothing about it. And which is very unfair. And I'm not the only person. I've actually had people at my school sign petitions as to if they agree to it or not. And we had about 45 signatures. And I didn't get to go around the whole school <laughs> all day, but <laughs> 45 signatures should be enough to understand how much, how unfair this is. Coach Green is actually with the other girls down in the city. That's why he couldn't be here today. I, I'm, not here, I'm not down there today because I decided to be here to voice my opinion. So. I would just like for you guys to consider the fact that he's experienced. Coach Hanson is experienced, and Miss Tuttle is not. So I don't know who I'm giving this position to. Thank you, Miss Phipps. Very nice job. Don't be nervous. <laughs> so, anyone else that wishes to speak on agenda items? If so, please step to the podium. Hi, I'm Cal Phipps. I'm actually <coughs> Kayla's mom. Um, may I ask, what is the main concern of the school district? Isn't it to better our kids? Isn't it to kind of make them feel comfortable? in whatever they do. We've had a lot of issues in the school system due to a lot of, well, we won't get into all those other things, but we don't want those things. We're trying to progress, move forward, build NFA and the school district as best as we can. I don't know how many of you guys have actually attended a track meet, but most of all these parents here have if you do not know what's involved in a track meet, you really need to take the time and go. It requires a lot of involvement from parents and whoever takes the position. Coach Hansen has been there nonstop. I mean, we go out of our way to make every girl on that team feel comfortable, make them feel that they can come to anyone with any problem. Bringing somebody new into the mix, that's not gonna happen. You're gonna have the girls, the younger ones, look into who for help. They're gonna need to go to someone that they can rely on, someone that is experienced. Half, half of these girls do pole vaults, high jumps. An injury like that requires experience. Not someone that says, okay, what do I do now? We're putting our kids in your care. 
Not only do we require, but I think we are demanding the common courtesy of actually having someone with experience to treat and take care of our kids. Not only am I saying this as a parent, a taxpayer, anything in the mix of that, but I think that I speak for all these parents. We don't want someone that we're gonna have to teach how to take care of our kids. Someone has already done that, continues to do it even when he's not even required to do it. So why not just give him the opportunity to show you, which he has already shown us, that he's more than capable of taking on this position. So I urge you to reconsider this, not only for the school district, but for our kids. That's what you all are here for, our kids, my kid. <clears throat> So thank you. Thank you. So anyone else that would like to comment on agenda items? Being none, we'll move forward with the agenda at this time. The next item on the agenda is from the board president. I have a resolution to approve the adoption of a new policy on two readings. <coughs> Numbers 3364, 4157, and 5751, Title VI, Non-Discrimination and Anti-Harassment. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. 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 Next item on the agenda is from the superintendent. Thank you, Madam President. Resolution A is to approve facilities project change orders associated with the following approved projects. NFA renovation project, NFA auto body project, and HOH renovation project. South Middle School Project, Gams Renovation, Gams Science Room Renovation, and Bales Gate Renovation. Project set one and two, and Gardner Town Renovation Project. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Yes, Ms. Prokash. I just have one question. I got a couple um, actually answered <laughs> since the uh, workshop last week. But I do, um, and I know we, it, it's a moot point in a way, because it's under a certain amount of money, but I, I still don't understand why we should be paying uh, $5,000 plus extra because the school had events going on and um, a door had to be open or something so they couldn't work. I mean, the, the, the company that is working here <coughs> making a tremendous amount of money and to nickel and dime five thousand dollars because there's school events going on to me is um, something that shouldn't happen uh, if, it, if it's a, a calendar <coughs> issue then whoever's doing daily uh, you know i would say with terry's group uh, it's not on the district calendar it's something that's coming up during the month then you know, people should be apprised of it so we're not charged because we're, the, the students are using the building, which is what they're supposed to be doing. One was for a dance and one was for a, something in an auditorium uh, being used at night so the night crew couldn't work those nights or whatever, and, and we're back charged uh, $5,000 uh, because of that. I, I, I don't see that as quite the right thing to do. So. Mr. I know we can't vote on it because it's under a certain Maybe I can shed a little light on that because I understand the concern. Um, we typically include the district's curriculum and instruction calendar in our bid documents because that's produced by the district in advance of the work. So if we have a one-year project, for example, we know what the curriculum and instruction calendar will be. 
that's what the contractors base their bids on. So any of those days that we know that they may not be able to work are identified when they prepare their bids. What we don't have, because each of the schools develops their own social calendar during the school year, <coughs> is the ability to advise those contractors of those events. Um, so what we've done, and it's consistent with the way our contracts are written, because the, most of our work is done during the summer months, we don't allow contractors to extend the period of time they have to complete their work. So if there's extra work that's required due to unforeseen conditions or some of those things we might discover, they are required to include the overtime and whatever pricing they give us so they can complete the work on time. That's the same, um, similar instance, like the example given was one in South where they had an event in the auditorium that wasn't something that was on the contractor's calendar when they bid the job. Because of the work that was ongoing in the courtyard and because of the warm temperatures at the time that the event was taking place in the auditorium, the auditorium doors were opened up and the contractors were asked not to work for two days. So rather than have them fall behind schedule, what we have typically done is provide the opportunity for the contractors to work a Saturday. The district only pays the premium portion of that work. They don't pay them to come in and work for that entire day, if you will. It's just the premium time associated with that. That's something that we've done um, consistently to try to get things done on time and without really putting the contractors in a spot where they're uh, behind schedule and they have to incur costs that was not of their own making. But in my mind, if it's something that social calendar, whether that's going to happen throughout the year, and I still can't say why, why we should spend money to have them come in to do something where they can do it. So if they don't do it on Saturday, they can do it on Monday. You know, one or two days in the scope of the years we've been going on with these, these uh, <coughs> contracts uh, to charge us extra money where that $5,000 was used for something else uh, instead of playing overtime is what I'm talking about. Yeah, typically, if, if there's not a concern with getting the work done as scheduled, and normally when we've done this, it's been during the summer months. And because of yeah. South as an example, we have, as we're working the, our way through games, because we have multiple completion dates, every one of the work periods is almost similar to working in the summer, where they have to be done in time, in this example, if it was Christmas break, so they could finish the classroom and get ready to reoccupy those classrooms. So they did have a definitive deadline they had to make. There wasn't really an opportunity to just extend their their duration of their work, if you will. We do monitor that very closely. If it's not going to impact the schedule, then we just would allow them to work and do the work on Monday, as you said, where it could potentially impact the work being completed as required so we can move to the next phase and have those rooms ready for occupancy. That's when we typically make that available to the contractor. And again, it's for the premium portion of that work only. And I understand your explanation. I don't agree with it, but I don't understand. I still don't agree with it. Is there any other questions or comments on this resolution? Resolution B is to award contract number one for the gym floor replacement at Foster Town School to Profex Incorporated as the lowest responsible bidder for the project. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Profex? Yes. Mr. Rex? Yes. Mr. Benson? Yes. Mr. Wendell? Yes. Mr. Chuck? Yes. Mm -hmm. Resolution C, to award contract number one for replacement of interior bleachers, provide gym divider, and provide locker room alterations at Heritage Middle School to Transitional Builders Incorporated as the lowest responsible bidder for the project. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Yes. Resolution D, that the Board of Education determines 
at the replacement of the existing exterior entry stair located at Temple Hill Elementary School is a type two action in accordance with CEDA regulations and will not have any adverse environmental impacts. Can I have a motion? No. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McQuaid? Yes. Mr. Brownback? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Besnick? Yes. Mr. Brownback? Yes. Mr. Jack? Yes. Madam President, that ends this portion of the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Pisa. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Student Intervention and Support Services. Thank you, Madam President. Item A are the recommendations from the Committee of Special Education. Can I have a motion? No. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Mr. Yes. 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 Item B is a resolution to recertify the district's plan for implementation of Commissioner Regulation 100.11, Shared Decision Making, and the 2012 Statement of Success. I have a motion. Questions or comments? <coughs> Roll call, please. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Mr. Lewis? <coughs> yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Gensley? Yes. Mr. Wernhoff? Yes. Mr. Jack? Yes. Item C is a resolution to approve facility use requests. Madam President, we'd like to ask uh, approval to have two facility use requests to the current resolution and to present the revised resolution which is in the folder uh, which was distributed before and includes the two items. Can I have a motion to add two items to this resolution and accept the revised resolution? Sorry. Roll call please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. 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 Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Protash? Yes. Ms. Rash? Yes. Mr. Bensley? Yes. Mr. Wendell? Yes. Mr. Jack? Yes. Madam President, item D is a resolution to authorize a modification to a service request agreement and we'd like to ask for approval to introduce a revised resolution which is also in the folder. Can I have a motion to accept the revised resolution on this item? Service request agreement <coughs> Northern Westchester, Westchester Bosis and an additional cost not to exceed $8,000. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Profash? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Bensley? Yes. Mr. Wendell? Yes. Mr. Thank you, Dr. Noriega. <laughs> Our next item on the agenda is from Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction. Thank you, Madam President. My first item is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement to purchase materials for the NICES lock test preparation. 
Corporation, Funding Sources, Title Three, LEV. No motion. No move. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Maskey? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Bensley? Yes. Mr. Whitehall? Yes. Yes. My next item is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with the Free Doctors LLC to provide mentoring services to students and professional development to staff members. Funding source: extended school extended day school violence prevention grant. We have a motion. So we'll move. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinson. Yes. Mr. Levinson. Yes. Mrs. McAfee. Yes. Mr. Rash. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Bensley. Yes. Mr. Whitehall. Yes. Mr. Yes. Madam President, in reference to item C, you have an updated list of conference requests. Can I have a motion to accept the revised conference list? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Perfect? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Bensley? Yes. Mr. Whitehall? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Madam President, I request that you approve conference requests. We have a motion. So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Perfect? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Bensley? Yes. Mr. Whitehall? Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Madam President, I have three additional items to add to the agenda this evening. Item D would be a resolution that authorizes the Board of Education to approve students, two students from the Newburgh Free Academy Boys Swim Team who qualify to compete in the NYS PHSAA Swimming and Diving Championships in Buffalo, New York from March 1st through March 3rd, 2012. Item E would be a resolution that the Board of Education approve the NFA Varsity Cheerleading Team to attend and compete in a national cheerleading competition at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida from March 16th through the 20th, 2012. Item F would be a resolution that the Board of Education approve 10 students from the Newburgh Free Academy Girls and Boys Track Team who qualify to compete in the Track and Field Championships in Ithaca, New York from March 2nd through March 3rd, 2012. I have a motion to add resolutions D, E, and F to the agenda. So moved. Roll call, please. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Madam Mr. Yes. 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 Yes. Mr. 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 Yes. Mr.
First one is $16,816.65 <coughs> for the current school year. Next one's $49,101.95 for the current school year dating back through the 0708 school year. And one for $3,235.35 for the 09 school year. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Broca? Yes. Ms. Rapp? Yes. Mr. Gensley? Yes. Mr. Wimble? Yes. Yes. Item B is a resolution to approve a bid for special needs transportation. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Yes, Ms. Prokash. You did check on whether we could go with another district on this too. Yeah, we did, but on this particular one, we said no, no. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Perkins? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Bansley? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Item C is a resolution to declare books and equipment surplus and obsolete and to authorize the disposal. Can I have a motion? So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Perkins? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Besley? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. Jenkins? Yes. Item D is a resolution to accept the building reports. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Perkins? Yes. Yes. Mr. Besley? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Pasella. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources. Thank you, Madam President. On the Human Resources agenda, items A through J, we have on the professional side the decision of an appointment. That's a date change for that individual. Home teacher appointments, leave of absence, return from leave of absence, retirements. And on the civil service side, we have appointments, change of status, change of location, leave of absence, resignations, and a former, former employees who passed away. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? <coughs> Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokash? Yes. Ms. Rash? Yes. Mr. Bensley? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. Chen? Yes. Resolution K is resolution to approve professional appointments as listed. I have a motion. Questions or comments? 
Yes, Ms. Prokash. So I have a question about November 14th work that it's given that we talked about. I have the regulation um, that I can share with you. I forgot to send it with the packet. But we were able to locate the uh, commissioner's regulation that prohibits half days of school in a shortened week that has holidays in it. But I'll get it for you. Well, I was, I knew about the half day, so I wondered about the whole day. Okay. No, for the for the reasons that I mentioned at the workshop. Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Matthew. Yes. Mr. Rokow. No. Mr. Yes. Resolution then is to approve the adoption of the revised 1112 district calendar. The revisions for 1112 are a half day of school on Monday, April the 30th, and a half day of school on Tuesday, May 1st. Um, we'll use the other half of the day for scoring of the state exams. Questions or comments? I'm sorry, can I have a motion? Yes. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Matthew? Yes. Mr. Perkash? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vanzo? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Resolution O is to approve the appointments for the Saturday Academy for ELA and math at Horizons on the Hudson Magnet School. Funding Title 1A. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Matthew? Yes. Mr. Perkoff? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vessel? Yes. Mr. Redhall? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. Resolution P is to approve the appointments for the PYP POI curriculum work at Horizons on the Hudson Magnet School. Funding source is Title I School Improvement. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Next resolution is to rescind the appointments in resolution 092711M as numbered <coughs> and to approve individuals for the Schedule J appointments in resolution 0228122Q. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Matthew? Yes. Yes. Mr. Perkoff? Yes. Mr. Rich? Yes. Mr. Gerson? Yes. Mr. Redwell? Yes. Mr. Check? Yes. Resolution R is to approve appointments for the Brigance testing for pre K students. Funding sources Universal Pre K grant. Can I have a motion? So Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Yes. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Matthew? Yes. Ms. Perkoff? Yes. Ms. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vanzo? Yes. Mr. Whitehall? Yes. Mr. Jack? Yes. Resolution S is to approve the spring athletic, coach, athletic coaching appointments for 11 and 12. Funding source is general. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Yes, Ms. Prokash. I'd like to table this if we put it to executive session because I am confused on a couple names that are on here. Okay. Can I have a motion to table resolution S? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokash? Yes. Ms. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vessels? Yes. Mr. Whitehall? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Resolution T is to approve the tenure recommendation for a teacher. I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. Pantley? Yes. Ms. Perkoff? Yes. Ms. Scratch? Yes. Ms. Bentley? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Madam President, at this point, we would like the resolution to add two items to this evening's agenda, items U and B, which are both after school program appointments and they're on the table. Can I have a motion? 
motion to add resolutions U and B to the agenda. Roll we'll call, please. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Levis? Yes. Mr. Matthew? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Bensley? Yes. Mr. Boyle? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Resolution U is the resolution to approve the appointments for the after school program project HOPE um, as listed. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Yes, Ms. Prokash. Where is this taking place? At Washington Street School. Washington. Over to all um, it's the It's funded by McKinney Vento, which is the homeless um, grant, so it's open to those students. Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prepkoff? Yes. Ms. Rash? Yes. Mr. Bensley? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Resolution B is a resolution to appoint staff to the spring 2012 SAT prep courses at New York Free Academy. Funding source is student paid tuition. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Yes. Mr. 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 Yes. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mrs. Weimer. At this time, the next agenda item is from the clerk of the board. accelerated program in the Horizons on the Hudson. And um, there is an accelerated program for sixth graders in the South, but I hear they may not continue that. I would I would really like to have an accelerated program in both school, in, uh, both the middle schools, or if not that, at least honors to be offered to sixth graders. Um, since the district felt that it was so important to have the sixth graders with the older kids that they can handle, you know, handle the responsibilities and mature, they're mature enough to do it, they should be offered the same opportunities as seventh and eighth graders to have honors and to have languages uh, offered, and also I think they all have art to have art to have all the specials um, to be treated. You know, similarly to the older kids and be offered more things. Many of my friends and um, acquaintances in the system would love to have an honors program in, in South and Heritage if possible. So I um, appreciate your consideration in that matter. And also, the Horizons has a wonderful IB program that I would really love to have continue in South and Heritage if possible. I know it may not be possible, but it's my son has benefited so much from that IB program. Um, the, the traits they teach, the tolerance, um, open-mindedness, caring, well-balanced is wonderful, wonderful things to aspire to. And the IB program offers very in-depth character. Um, 
sort of like our deep profile analyses, very in-depth study and inquiry-based um, programs, and it's well respected in the whole world. So I think it's great to to have that continue, especially in the high school, where it would look great on a resume, <laughs> um, you know, in college and future. So, so please consider my requests. <laughs> Especially the honors. Uh, I appreciate it. Your time. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Murillo. <laughs> Next, we will hear from security and the girls' basketball players. about us, our parents, or the coach. Um, examples of it, yesterday we had a game, we played Washington. Though. Before the game, she bullied, I'm going to say, my sister, Tasha. Um, she said that the girls are not allowed to go on one side of the school to come up the stairs. We do it every day. Before practice, after practice, during the school, we go that way. So she told her she couldn't go that way. And I guess she went off with the mouth because her boss was there. So my sister walked away or whatever. And she brought her boss and her to the coach and said something else to him. Now, he couldn't be here today, but he tried his best to try to get here. Um, we're just tired of it. We just need somebody to do something about it because I've been on the team since I was in eighth grade. She just started this year. Um, and the only reason why she is doing all this is because her granddaughter is not on, no longer on our team. Now, her granddaughter claims we bully her. We're not bullies. <laughs> We're too small to be bullies. But um, her grades took her off the team. We didn't kick her off. Her grades took her off. Um, yesterday at the game, at the end of the game, she told one of our players, I got you, I got you, watch out. Today in school, one of my players she swung at, um, swung at her in school today. Her granddaughter. Um, we're just tired of her bullying us. She should step up the same way we're stepping up and not saying anything to her. She needs to Excuse me. Um, there's a point of order. You're not permitted to discuss student record information, so referring to other students is not permitted during public comment time. Other students have a right to privacy in their information. You can continue with, with what you're saying, but don't mention any names. Can you do that? Thank you. General concerns, but not specifics by our attorney. Okay. Sarah Williams, um, 
just the same security guard. She been saying stuff to me like every day. I have a cousin that works at the school as a security guard. Um, she been like, basically I'll come into the school building and she will be where I come in every morning. She just started it. I mean, I've been on varsity since I was in like, ninth grade. I'm only in 10th now. I never said nothing to the lady. She just started after, never started the beginning of school year. After her granddaughter got kicked off the team, she started coming towards me and started saying things to me. I, I never respond. I mean, it's threatened by her granddaughter every day because she claimed that I said smart stuff to her. She, go to, she goes back and she says stuff. And like, I, I don't say nothing to the security guard, but like, it's like enough is enough. I go to school just to do my work and go home and play basketball. I'm in sections. I don't really want nobody, no security guard saying this, nothing to me at all. Like, um, every day I leave school, I have to worry about washing my back because of she going back to her and doing her grandkids. I mean, an adult is an adult, and she shouldn't be able to discuss her, her what happened in school with a child to someone in her family where when you go home, you have to watch out before you go around and stuff. I just, like, she, enough is enough, but I just wanted to stop her. I don't know who has to talk to her or whatever, but she shouldn't, it shouldn't be me have to worry about when I should be a teenager going to school and going to school for grades that are worrying about a security guard saying something to me or asking me to follow the class to put me in a sack or something, for something that I don't even comment back on or walking away, I still get of walking out back out of class and she's right there. Girls, I just want you to know that the superintendent will certainly look into this and if you would like to share specific information with him, um, you certainly can call um, to make an appointment uh, with him or um, come with your parents, however you're most comfortable, um, but certainly to share the specifics of this, but I, I do want you to know that based upon the information that's been provided here this evening, he will be looking into this. Thank you very much, girls. Anyone else wishing to speak on non-agenda items? My name is Elder Hillary Ray um, Pretty much what the girls had said, um, standing there. But it goes a little further than just teens becoming a problem. Also with the parents, um, the coach, and I know we had a meeting with Miss Liner on the 7th of of February. I tried to contact uh, different administrators today um, with what, what has been expiring, you know, um, trans, um, how can I say, that, you know, that has been transpiring since um, the granddaughter was taken off the team by her grandmother. It um, started January 27th at the Arsenal awesome game to where the coach himself was taunted by the head security. Um, myself and other parents witnessed it and was appalled of her behavior. And it was not called for, neither was it professional. Um, and her conduct continues. So we would like for the board to um, please put on the agenda a meeting as soon as possible with the team members and their parents. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's been happening for months and it has been escalated to the family to where my daughter was assaulted and it's, and it's going to be in legal hands. So um, I just uh, charge you that it is a it is an urgent concern. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rainford. The superintendent will be in contact with you regarding that meeting. Anyone else wishing to speak on non-agenda items?
Hey, good evening. <coughs> Such a great little. Um, I might look familiar. My name is Bill Davis. I'm from Fishkill, New York. And since it was enumerated, I guess um, I need to ask permission of the chair to speak since I am for. I'm not a resident of this district, but I would very much like to be able to speak to the board. One minute, Mr. Davis. <coughs> Okay, go ahead, Mr. Davis. Thank you. Again, my name is Bill Davis from Fishkill. My wife and I have two children that attend Bishop Dunn. And yes, it's another board meeting and another episode of my ordeal and trying to get Newburgh to properly document an IESP for my children. Last month, I came before you to update the board on what has and has not happened with the issue which was first brought to your attention in August of 2011. When I spoke to you at your January 31st meeting, I told you that earlier that day we requested a meeting with decision makers in the district so that hopefully the issue could be resolved. This was followed up with a three-page letter with multiple enclosures sent to the superintendent in response to paperwork that we had received from his office. Well, the request for a meeting with the superintendent was first delegated to an assistant superintendent, then eventually in turn to an executive director. That only took a week and a half. On Friday afternoon, February 10th, going into a three-day weekend, Mr. Swanson called, leaving a message, and followed up with an email stating that he would like to convene a CSE meeting in March to review the educational program and develop an appropriate IEP. He also stated that at the meeting, we would address issues and concerns raised in our letter to the superintendent. He stated that he, and now a new and different CSE chair, would be there. He did request that we advise him of any individuals we would like present so an appropriate team is convened. He also requested in the CC email that the principal of Bishop Dunn provide him with a complete list of staff members who work with my daughter. The kicker in this email, though, was the quote, and I quote, in the event you have any documentation that has not been presented at previous CSC meetings that you believe is relevant to review, please provide that to me prior to the meeting. Well. Our response was to point out the absurdity of the situation. We had had a CSE for a program review that ended in complete agreement. The problem was to get Newberg to accurately document that. Granted, a valid IESP from the May 2011 meeting would be nice to have, but since there are errors in it that have been pointed out to Newberg which have never been corrected, if the November meeting could produce a legitimate IESP, that would be progress. We asked if a CS, another CSE meeting was really necessary. Would not the teachers and service providers at Bishop Dunn have their time better utilized in classrooms teaching children instead of attending yet another meeting? We also pointed out that his request for us to submit to him for review any documentation we believe relevant was, quite frankly, insulting. Since we had by letter in October requested to see our daughter's entire file. The motivation was so that we could be assured the district had all relevant information. Since to date, and it is now 136 days, and I feel compelled to publicly remind all of you that state regulations require a district make records available within a reasonable time, but in no case more than 45 calendar days after the request and before any meeting. And quite frankly, it shouldn't take more than a day or two. And this request should not be a surprise to anyone, since in addition to the letter of request, we mentioned it at meetings with CSE chairs that had the file in front of them. And in fact, we mentioned it in front of this very board. Since today we have not seen the file, we could only guess at what is needed. On a side note, there is some promise on the horizon since the latest contact from the district yesterday says we can call and make an appointment to see the file. That promise is somewhat tarnished by the fact that the corrected IEP mentioned in that same email, which I picked up this very morning, had absolutely no changes from the document which was produced in January. It appears that a three-page letter with at least 15 distinct items pointed out that needed correction sent to the superintendent was either ignored or was lost in the process of delegating. This is frustrating. I asked the Board of Education to get involved in getting answers. Why is a request for a meeting with decision makers ignored? There are items over and above this particular documentation that needs to be addressed. How can the special ed department not get this right? Why are numerous state regulations disregarded? 
why are direct questions in CSE meetings and in letters never responded to? Why are the promises of answers, when given, never acted upon? The list of questions continue, but I am sure I am either boring or inciting the good people of Newburgh here tonight, many of whom may also have questions about the effectiveness of their tax dollars and how they're being used. Madam President, five minutes. That was five minutes? I have like a paragraph to go, may I continue? If not, I'll be more than happy. I mean, it's, it's your fault. Can you, yes, can it's, you it's please literally, provide the copy of that to the board clerk so that the board can well, review actually, all maybe, of your I mean, since I, I can't get another 20 seconds, what I may do is I may just, uh, may I request my letter of complaint to the State Ed Department, to Commissioner King, and to my State Assembly, and who is a uh, ranking member on the State Education Committee. Should I submit copies of that to just the board, or should I email it to each and every individual board member? For a lousy 20 seconds, I've been dealing with this since May. And for 20 seconds, that would have been done by now. But for 20 seconds, and I've been dealing with it since May. It's 10 months I've been dealing with this issue. Perhaps the attorney would like to respond to this. Citizen comments are, are limited um, to the five minute time frame that has been allotted. Um, Okay, very well. Next month, I, well, I'll send it. Next month, I'll keep the stop off. I've been asked just to provide some general information responsive to what, what you're saying if you're desirous of hearing it. I am familiar with what you've said tonight at the microphone, and what I know is that in relation to the letters, not specifically about uh, the request for student records, I was not aware that you had made a request for student records. Um, however, I am familiar with the three-page letter that you referred to having brought forward some concerns. And in a general sense, the process for addressing those concerns is in fact a CSE meeting or an amendment to the IESP document. And I think that Mr. Swanson has communicated his willingness to address many of the concerns that you've raised through that process, either through IESP amendment or through setting up a meeting. So if you're willing to participate in that, hopefully many of the concerns that you've raised can be addressed promptly now. Um, and I would encourage that, you know, process to be allowed to occur. I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, it's a little. I'm assuming the attorneys all can see from that. Um, the the ironic thing here is that the meeting took place. Everything was agreed. It's just the documentation. So to have another meeting to see if we can document the original meeting makes absolutely no sense. As far as correcting the three-page letter, I have it. I'll be more than happy to provide it. The document that was given to me as the corrected ISP is verbatim to the last one. So nothing transpired in the last month. Okay, it's frustrating. I understand that I get five minutes to talk, and I apologize to the good citizens here that I'm, I'm now probably into eight minutes. But it's frustrating, and I've been trying to deal with the district directly. Um, the only reason I haven't escalated further is because my daughter is receiving the services because she goes to the private school. I can, I can appreciate what you're saying and your frustrations, and I would you know, say if you're willing to, to give it another day or so, I understand that many of the concerns addressed in your letter were agreed to be changed conceptually, and that there are a couple of substantive changes you're asking for that will need further review by the Committee on Special Education. Um, however, you know, the, the, the things that were already agreed to that were, in your opinion, not documented accurately, some of those things have, in fact, been conceptually agreed to be changed in terms of the documentation. So whatever copy you were given today may so, have just been given to you in error. Oh, okay, so it's the secretary's fault. I'm not saying it's anyone well, no, in particular's again, fault. I'm saying that whatever version you got up, may have just been the incorrect version. When we showed up at a meeting where they forgot to invite the, the um, relevant parties, it was the secretary's fault. It's frustrating. And I apologize for taking more time than no. I was allowed to. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Davis. <laughs> At the last board meeting, after I sat down, Ms. Gucek, you decided to answer some of the statements that I presented. One was on diversity training. You really must think I'm stupid. I was a teacher for 35 years, a board member for six years, and in two of those years, the program from NYU, you tout it as being diversity training, leads me to believe that you have no idea what diversity training entails. The NYU program 
was dealing with disproportionality. I believe, simply put, this means someone had to come up here, train the staff as to how the policies, practices, and beliefs set by the district created inequability. Maybe a little more than that, but basically, that's some of what, was, what is going on. This is a way to say that you are doing something, and I applaud you for making the effort to do something, even if it is only trying to uh, give teachers some help on differentiated instruction. But this is not diversity training. When you have teachers making remarks about Arab students, when you have teachers putting a rope around a black student's neck, when you have administrators, teachers saying, I can't deal with those Spanish students, or you have a group of little black boys misbehaving and the teacher tells them there'll never be anything, I think you need to bring a district-wide training program, diversity training program, into this district. I understand that you may think everything is wonderful. And from your perspective, it may be wonderful. And a few incidents don't mean we need district-wide training. But I say to you, walk a mile in the little black boy's shoes. Walk a mile in the little Latino boy's shoes. Walk a mile in the big black girl's shoes. And you will understand why I keep coming up here asking you to do something that the Pine Bush schools do, Monroe Woodbury schools do, New Paul's High School and colleges do, SUNY Orange does, Central Hudson does, attorneys do. What makes you think that a district of 70 plus minority students and 80 plus percent white staff don't need diversity training? Not because they're racist, but because they need to know that a lot of these students do not see the world as those teachers or you see the world. But they still want to be educated. When I taught some of, when I taught, some of the things I told teachers about African Americans amazed and shocked them. So as I have stood before you for the last five months and asked you for this training to take place, and you tell me it has been going on for two years, the only conclusion I can come to is that you really don't know what diversity training is. Or you think that one district that has the largest minority population up here in this area is doing fine. Graduation rates are in the toilet, but we're doing fine. Large number of students are failing their regions test, but we're doing fine. By the end of the year, home teaching bill will be over a million dollars, but we're doing fine. The only person held accountable for the basketball fiasco was a minority. She was both black and female. I leave you with one Bible verse. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. Your days are numbered because you are not serving the district. It's all about you and how you please your friends. And as I look up there, the eyes are against us. Any other comments on non agenda items? Johnston. I'm a resident of the district and also a parent. It has been announced in the press that the Newburgh School District plans to hire an executive principal for NFA by the end of February. The job description for the executive principal position is printed in the minutes of the January 20, 2012 Board of Ed meeting on page 20. The job description <coughs> used was largely copied from a job description published on the web by the San Diego School District in 2006. That is not necessarily a problem. In these difficult financial times, carefully using relevant, high-quality materials could save our district time and money. 
My concern is not so much with what was copied, but rather with what was not copied. The San Diego description included 22 job functions. Newberg job description reduced that by three. Three functions that were omitted from the Newberg executive principal job description were, one, act as an advocate for assigned schools, engage the community in the development of the individual school programs, respond to parent issues and concerns, and participate in parent meetings. Two, provide leadership to the staff in assessing school needs and effectiveness and determining objectives as the basis for developing long and short-term plans for the school of assignment. And three, make periodic appraisals of pupil progress and ensure direct reports to parents. It seems strange that the job functions that require communication with parents were not included. The parents were not mentioned at all in the Newberg posting. It is also surprising that providing leadership to the staff in the areas of effectiveness, objectives, and planning was not included. This is all water under the bridge. The search is presumably completed and matters decided. All that I wish to say is that I sincerely hope that communicating with parents and providing leadership to staff are skills that the Newburgh School District values, encourages, and would it be too much to say requires of its senior administrators. And those are things to be decided by you, the Board of Education. Thank you. Other comments on non-agenda items? Being none, be it resolved that the board hereby recesses into executive session for the following purposes, to review the employment history of particular individuals and proposed acquisition, sale, or lease of real property, only when publicity will substantially affect the value thereof. The board may take further action after the executive session. Thank you all for being here this evening. So moved. Second. <laughs> Roll call. Mr. Levinson? Yes. 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 Name will appear as Mark Van Voorhis. Item number eight. The uh, name will appear as Bajoran Hansen. And item number nine will appear as Amy Tuttle. Can I have a motion to add resolution as as amended to the agenda? So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Levinson. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. 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 Roll call, please. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mrs. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yes. Be it resolved that the board president is hereby authorized to execute an addendum agreement dated February 28, 2012 to the superintendent's contract dated February 15, 2011 regarding a car allowance in lieu of providing a leased vehicle to the superintendent. A copy of said addendum agreement shall be incorporated by reference within the minutes of this meeting. Can I have a motion? So, second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Yes.